a very good evening to all the participants we feel really uh, we feel really happy and excited that today we have with us rohit gautam sir thank you sir for accepting the invitation and being the part of this this uh, this effort towards the cyber awareness thank you so much sir with this on the behalf of sifs india and my co-host uh, ruchika divedi i would like to request ruchika to kindly take the charge of the session and introduce our speaker rohit sir thank you ma'am thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, good evening sir good evening everyone uh, today we have with us rohit gautam sir founder of hackify cyber security he is going to deliver his talk on cyber awareness talk on emerging cyber threats and supply chain attacks in 2021 so i take this opportunity to welcome sir uh, rohit gautam sir is a founder at hackify cyber security and an avid security researcher with a special interest in network exploitation and web application security analysis he has worked as cyber security consultant and dealt with various confidential organizations and projects he has delivered many conferences and trained individuals across india he has helped and secured various multinational organizations like apple google ecoron and many more by responsibly reporting vulnerabilities he is an online security instructor with 150 plus countries and has a 50000 plus student across the globe his top skills include cyber security analysis malware analysis and threat and vulnerability management being a cyber security trainer he has taught and made aware various students and professionals about cyber security new attacks and how to be safe on internet at cyber at hackify cyber security he is always focusing on mitigating information security risk and providing a safer internet he has been honored with numerous awards such as national level networking week championship hall of fame acron grow hall of fame dark matter and 10 times with apple hall of fame award and many more so i welcome uh, you sir on uh, today's awareness talk please welcome sir take uh, over to you sir now thank you rohit sir and uh, the now the session is completely yours we are going to learn a lot from you thank you so much for inviting me uh, thank you so much for such a warm welcome kritika uh, ruchika and uh, ranjit sir thank you so much for um, inviting me and having me so that i can share my insights and views over the emerging uh, emerging cyber threats and what are supply chain attacks that we are facing currently in 2021 so without taking uh, any further time i would like to start this session <laughs> so i'm going to share my screen right now uh, please acknowledge me if my screen is visible yes sir your screen is visible thank you so i'll just skip my introduction because that was a really really great introduction done ruchika thank you so much so uh, disclaimer this talk is based on my personal views uh, based on my experience what i have identified from the industry working as an ex security consultant in different organizations right now uh, i'm in cyber security instructor and i teach regarding what happens in web application pen testing mobile application pen testing cloud security and so on so if you like uh, the presentation you can implement this into your organization's methodology uh, i'm going to discuss more towards how organizations can take advantage from this specific talk but at the end i have a slide in which i'm going to share insights over how an individual can take advantage of this uh, specific talk so uh, the talk topic is emerging cyber security threats and supply chain attacks that we are currently facing now why are we discussing about cyber security first uh, we have seen a global pandemic that has hit us so bad all the businesses and everything was shut down and we saw that organizations were not able to cope up at least in the unorganized sector but cyber security remains hot despite covid 19 downturn what was the reason so we identified based on a survey that was done on the number of jobs that were released on linkedin we saw that 261545 in total number of jobs uh, were 
opened up that needs to be fulfilled, fulfilled for different cybersecurity roles. As you can see on your left hand side, these were the different sectors in which there was a requirement for cybersecurity actively. So we require a lot of people to be a part of the effective cybersecurity workforce because every day we are so much connected to cybersecurity. We have apps, we have web applications. We are so much connected to internet that our day starts from opening up an app maybe to order food for us or maybe booking flight tickets for us or maybe if we need medical assistance, we have everything on our fingertips. With this technological advancement and moving very fast with an enormous speed, we should always keep in mind about the security hazards that are going to come across our way. We should always take security as prime focus and understand what possibly could go wrong. Hence, we are going to discuss today about just a second. The impact of uh, remote work. So this is one of the point that has been added in emerging cybersecurity threats. Why? Because we all know that due to this COVID-19, we have a culture that is work from home now. Every organization do not want to stop their business. Obviously, none of them want that to happen. They want the business to continue. For that, the employees are being shifted from organization's infrastructure to their work from home culture. With that, yes, we are moving forward. We are making the business continue and run, but there are new threats that are coming up. So the first is exposed attack surface. That basically means that organizations, when open up their platforms for their employees to log in remotely, those platforms were never first exposed to the public internet. Now, they are just publicly exposed for the employees to log in, which creates an attack surface for a lot of attackers and adversaries. We have seen that on Shodan, a lot of people now identified various assets, maybe that is domains, subdomains, routers, or different network devices that were never found before. Due to this COVID-19, organizations have been forced to public what was private of their assets for their employees to get access to their infrastructure. So I think uh, uh, someone has to mute, I believe. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I hope you guys understood the first point that was exposed attack surface. Now we are more vulnerable than ever before because organizations have to continue, continue their businesses. Hence, they have uh, exposed their network, their infrastructure, their devices to the public internet so employees can easily access that. Now, the second point is the lapse in the security policies. We all know that we, when work in organizations, we are being enforced certain group policies that we need to follow. We cannot access a specific resource, or maybe we cannot connect USB pen drives to our computer. But in this work from home culture, there are no such group policies enforced on us because of which security concerns arise. Me, let's say I'm an employee of X bank. I'm working remotely from my computer at my a home in, in my comfort and I connect those USB devices which I found just now lying somewhere and there was a malware. Now it could potentially connect my computer to a, to a command and control server to the attacker's computer and this way my computer may be compromised. The data that is essentially confidential for my organization could be potentially leaked from my computer. So this is a emerging threat that we can see that comes along with the work from home culture. Insecure logins. Now people just log in into their VPNs or maybe the organization's network infrastructure through different computers. Okay. 
obviously those computers may not be running a, a secure channel a secure point a vpn or maybe there are already some harmful malware virus worms trojans that are already running onto their systems they may extract the information from where the connection has been established to the organization i see a lot of people just keeping their devices unattended this is a bad practice and we should always lock our devices before we walk away in organizations we have taught we are taught this many times but yes when we are at our homes in our comfort we forget this any any person any of your family members or any third party person or a relative or friend who comes at your place could potentially see what is running into your organization through your laptop's dashboard i also see a lot of people using personal emails emails for business purposes or forwarding organizations data on their personal emails this is generally the trend that we have seen nowadays that people have started working from home and they don't mind sharing sensitive information on personal email clients like gmail or uh, gmail or outlook which basically brings in a potential attack surface again why because it may be that that the passwords for these email clients are already compromised in a data breach and an attacker could potentially see the confidential data of the organization that has been transferred from these email clients or these personal email communications so i just want to ask a question to every one of you who's watching is your remote work free from cyber security risks and if you think that you fall under one of these points that you can see on your screen then definitely it's a no and we should follow these guidelines or policies strictly so that we try to minimize the security risk or the impact that could potentially uh, come in future now you may ask we understood a problem now what are the solution of it so what is the take away of the impact of remote work if your organization experienced a sudden a, a sudden shift to a remote workforce maybe then what you should do you must identify the areas of weaknesses that left your company vulnerable to threats that is basically the attack surface that the organization has opened up for everyone you should always keep in mind these other points that i have mentioned so that you minimize the risk of your computer getting damaged and your organization's sensitive data getting exposed to cyber criminals the next one is ransomware attacks now i definitely uh, believe that i think uh, yeah so i definitely believe every one of you know what is ransomware attacks because it is so much dominant into cyber security industry ransomware attacks have been used by attackers in several ways to compromise a lot of confidential systems of government and private organizations and we all know about ransomware attacks at least who are in cyber security now there are new variants of ransomware attacks that have been developed because attackers always stay two steps ahead from the defenders so they are using sophisticated techniques now that includes identifying new exploit or zero days in software solutions maybe like microsoft word a zero day exploit that recently was dropped which basically utilizes the ms html exploit of microsoft word document through which a attacker can get a remote code execution onto your system and later download a ransomware onto your system and encrypt all your files so for that we need to keep in mind that whenever we are logging in in from our computers we should be really very aware and we should not click any links that we do not trust any websites that we do not visit or try to open up any documents that we have received into the mail or maybe spam folders or download anything from torrent for example now when a ransomware comes into your computer it is going to basically encrypt all your files and data and then it is going to ask you or extort you for money that is basically always paid in cryptocurrencies like bitcoins okay so once you pay the ransom 
to the specific attacker they're going to give you a key and based on that key you can decrypt and get your files back but again there's no guarantee in this that we cannot guarantee that there will be a fair play when you pay you will get a key okay so just keep in mind to avoid this what are your takeaways we always have to keep oh uh, this is the same point basically so what you have to do is you have to keep in mind that you do not click any unwanted links that you do not trust first whenever you are connected to your com to the to, to your computer systems or you're connected to your organization's network or infrastructure make sure do not download any third party softwares i see a lot of people downloading code from github that they do not trust generally a lot of attackers use this technique which is uploading open source software on github and then hiding their droppers which basically downloads the backdoor from their uh, web servers so you should always trust that you are not downloading and executing any such code that you do not trust directly from github which could potentially lock your systems and spread this mal malware which is ransomware the third emerging threat i that i believe is increase in attacks on cloud service providers so i see that because of covid-19 a lot of organization has moved toward cloud service providers like aws azure digital ocean or any other now they think that they are putting all their responsibilities on these cloud service providers and they can have a good sleep but the fact is totally opposite we when are giving all our data onto this cloud service providers then it does not mean that we are doing uh, we are getting 100% secure okay definitely there are a lot of configurations access controls uh, iem issues that we need to keep in mind if we do not configure our cloud service settings properly then there could be a way that our attacker could potentially exfiltrate or download all our data from these types of cloud service providers there are many configuration issues like s3 bucket issues wherein anyone could potentially download all your source code from your cloud service provider and we have seen this we have seen a lot of researchers reporting in bug bounty programs that access to a s3 bucket which is hosting sensitive information for client maybe the credit card numbers or any sensitive information which contains login and passwords okay uh, there is one more thing that come across us with increase on cloud services is downtime there could be a potential re potential reason that maybe those cloud services go down due to a misconfiguration that could potentially leave a downtime to you which will impact in business losses according to a survey we identified that misconfigured cloud settings cost in total 4.41 millions in loss for organizations in 2020 this basically means that you should you should be really proactive on what service you are using and all the employees should definitely know that what are the best practices over here and do not leave the settings on default or maybe the configuration on default okay so what are the key takeaways over here before we migrate to the cloud make sure the organization is aware of the security measures it should have in place to avoid data breaches okay so there are also a lot of potential uh, security researchers which have identified multiple ways to bypass the web application firewalls as well i see a majority chunk of people who works in startups or uh, medium level smes uh, so i have seen over there that those people just rely on cloud service providers and their web application firewalls and they do not tend to put interest in security testing now there are security researchers who identify flaws in waf and they are able to bypass the web application firewall as well that means that we can penetrate through this cloud service providers that are the services or the protection they are providing definitely we cannot secure a system 100% but we can try our best to minimize the risks 
so it would be unwise to say that we put all our duties and responsibility onto a cloud service provider and just take wave off our hands and we do not do a security test or may maybe we do not configure it in a correct manner covid 19 phishing schemes this is one of the most common and prevalent uh, attack vector that i see and an emerging threat a lot of people are getting phishing emails that are related to COVID-19. It could be basically uh, maps about COVID-19, vaccine information, or any such uh, fake or fraud documents that have been supplied stating that these documents are coming from government organizations. Also, this was the customer side or the user end side organizations have also been affected by this COVID-19 phishing schemes. For example, attacks against pharmaceutical companies and vaccine distributors is very much prevalent. Those emails are being sent to these pharmaceutical companies saying that we want to purchase in bulk a lot of vaccines for a specific clinic or a center. Now, these links contains malware like ransomware which basically encrypts all the data of those pharmaceutical companies. And that way, it again causes a data breach for them. We also saw that COVID-19 maps were very, very, very famous. And a lot of people were indulged into activities. And obviously, they were really, very excited to know that uh, in my uh, nearby places or in my neighborhood, are there any COVID-19 patients? So they definitely installed this COVID-19 fake map applications that were for Windows-based computers, which basically did what was it exfiltrated data from the computers of users. And there was a fake map which just showed fake data. So we should always keep this in mind that we are not clicking on unwanted links that we are getting through emails. That is first. Second, we are not indulging through any such activities that is downloading any potential untrusted harmful software in a computer and giving it admin rights. I always say that we should always keep three A in mind to avoid phishing. The first one is analyze. So anytime if you come across any SMS that you have got, which, which lures you or gives you some potential feeling of you're going to get something which is uh, maybe free or gift, or it has, it has a very good offer, you should always analyze it. Second is, after you analyze it, you should avoid it. You should understand that why me, why am I the one who has received this email, who is potentially trying to trick me into this offer, okay? So second one is avoid. And the third one is alert. Alert people around you, alert uh, cybercrime agencies. You can always report phishing emails to cybercrime.gov.in. You can report uh, to this uh, cybercrime anti-phishing unit. They always take these types of emails and identify the domains and they try to take them down. So basically what you're doing here is you are helping others so they do not fall victims to these types of attacks. Definitely, we have seen that majority of data breaches that we come across are due to phishing, either if you talk about individual or an organizational level. So we should always keep in mind that we definitely 100% cannot take down phishing or social engineering, but we ourselves with the help of security awareness or basic digital hygiene, try to minimize the risk or impact of these uh, phishing campaigns or social engineering campaigns that come across. So I hope you guys understood this. Let's move ahead. The takeaways would be phishing training, as I've already discussed, and awareness amongst organizations and individuals. Okay, the next point is insider threats on rice. I see this point again as one of the emerging threat now, because there are a lot of disgruntled employees, angry employees. They want to take revenge from organizations. 
So generally what they do is they take out the information from their organization and maybe they sell it to their competitors or maybe they sell it on dark web and deep web. This way, the confidentiality, integrity, availability of the organization's data gets tampered. So organizations shouldn't ignore the reality of an increasing sophistication of threat actors within their own company. They should always keep excess control for all their employees. That basically means that certain amount of employees only get access to certain amount of data. Then in the hierarchic level, these are the employees which should get access to only the database or certain activities. So there should be a very strong access control implementation between different categories of employees. Also, more than required access to organization's infrastructure could also potentially leave the organization to one of the victim of insider threats. There are various reports that we see that organizations try to safeguard themselves by doing quality pen test and fixing all the issues from outer world that is out, outside attack vectors, but they forget to keep their internal infrastructure safe by implementing proper um, required access controls, group policies, and poor logging and monitoring. If an organization would correctly log all the activities that are being done on the systems in the organization by their employees, they could potentially try to identify a certain pattern or an anomaly in the logs of these users that they are doing certain activities that are not correct. Or maybe these activities are not required by specific employees needs to, that needs to uh, be done. So in that case, at very early stages itself, we can identify these problems and restrict them so that we are better uh, way ahead Late, better way ahead than these employees leaking uh, these sensitive information out maybe to competitors or deep web or dark web. So what are the takeaways or solution to this? A very strong access control mechanism for all the employees. They should have proper tools and system in place to detect malicious activities that are being done by the users. They should basically identify the patterns that what a user specifically does on these systems. And in case he's trying to elevate his privileges or maybe try to do certain activities here and there, which looks suspicious, it should immediately be identified and verified so that we could stop the attack at a very early stage. Okay, so how to combat emerging threats, you may ask. This is for the organizations. How one organization can identify these all risks that we have already discussed about? How are we going to combat these types of threats or maybe any new upcoming threat that arises later on? The first is adopt zero trust model. Now, what is zero trust model? It basically says that we are not going to trust anything that is into an organization. It could potentially be employees while sharing the data between two parties, or it could be uh, the systems that have been put in place. We should always have a remediation plan in which we can identify that the access that we are giving, going to give to this particular user through this particular system should be uh, maybe logged or mapped, okay? So zero trust model basically helps out in identifying uh, early stages of breaches. And it also helps us mitigate or at least minimize the impact of these types of risk. So everyone should adopt a zero trust model in organizations and basically do not trust anything that come across us. Maybe if emails are coming, why? You should ask the, ask the first thing. Those emails should be done a proper email header analysis to identify if they are from a valid source before interacting with any such malicious, maybe Office, uh, Microsoft Office Word documents or Excel documents and so on. The next point is create an incident response team. This is very, very essential. Well, now what does an incident response team basically do? 
they identify what are uh, the systems that are running into an organization with continuous monitoring and logging of all the activities that are being done. That basically means, let's say an organization X offers a data breach. In that case, the organization's incident response team has to identify these logs. So they should preserve these uh, logs, which could definitely be useful as an evidence later on. The organization in that case, if it's not preserving the logs or evidences, or maybe they do not have uh, enough capacity to maybe uh, save these evidences or they do not have a team like SOC, in that case, they should definitely implement a team or uh, certain individuals who are preserving these logs that can be helpful to identify what was the root cause of this data breach that has occurred. Why this is useful? Because we would like to now avoid any such data breaches or attacks on our organization in future if we already know that these are some of the entry points for any attacker to come inside our organization. So we should, we should always keep in mind, if we, are, if we are already being infected or maybe we are already under a data breach at that particular point of time, what are the factors that lead to this specific data breach? So a correct incident response team or an incident response plan would map those loopholes in our organization, maybe policies, or maybe individuals who have downloaded, downloaded a specific software, or maybe uh, any person who has injected a USB drive, which were containing a malware. With this, I can recall a scenario that I would like to quickly share. So uh, we identified when I was working in one of the bank organization, we identified that there was a connection into a computer that was making a connection to an attacker server in Russia. We quickly wanted to know that why this is happening. We later on identified that there was a lot of data which was exfiltrated from that computer. And we were, while doing the root cause analysis of this attack, identified that the bank manager himself inserted a USB key or the USB drive, the pen drive that he identified into his parking lot. Now, this is a really, really very uh, famous uh, attack that has been already been portrayed multiple times and people have discussed about this that whenever you identify any uh, unknown USB flash drives, please do not at least put them into your uh, office workstations or your work computers. This is a very famous technique which is used by attackers wherein they utilize this way to maybe connect to uh, the organization's infrastructure and then try to exfiltrate the data from there. All right, the next point is fix complex security environments. So we have seen that organizations do not first of all have a security team or maybe a SOC team. In case they have it, it it's very complex. There are multiple layers of processes that are being involved into it, which restricts uh, the security researchers or cybersecurity analysts or consultants in identifying uh, potential issues for that specific environment. Okay. So there should be a policy, but it should not be so strict that it is not followed by the employees. It should not be very loose that there are a lot of security la laps in that security policy. It should be stringent enough and it should be applicable for everyone so that they can implement into their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, schedule of that specific organization. The next is implementing a holistic approach for cyber resilience. Now, organizations know this already that cybersecurity is very important for us and we do not want to, a data breach to happen to us. So they, what, what, what do they generally do? They implement antivirus solutions or maybe uh, any other SIEM solutions for their organizations. But they should understand a fact that only by implementing this certain software solutions is not going to help them. 
there should be a holistic approach to this it basically means that attackers are getting way too smarter to bypass these certain edr softwares or siem software solutions that we implement in our organizations so we should proactively try to see how can we combat or maybe try to minimize the risk an attacker would do that is doing proper security assessments periodic audits of our infrastructure and doing uh, uh social engineering simulations in organizations to just try to identify that uh, any employee from our organization may not uh, click any of such malicious link and may become a victim of uh, such social engineering campaign scam or this way our data is not being leaked from our organization we all know about twitter twitter has a bug bounty program from years a lot of researchers have identified good issues over there but why still they were under a cyber attack we all saw that a lot of uh, twitter verified accounts from their accounts there were tweets are done that send me x amount of btc i'll send you back double now when the root cause analysis was done for this specific attack we identified that some of the internal tools of twitter employees were accessed by the cyber criminals and they also identified and managed uh, to put this into their report saying that it was through social engineering through phishing so the internal security employees got tricked in maybe clicking an unwanted email or a certain link which got the cyber criminals or attackers access to those private tools so we should always keep in mind no matter how much we try to implement uh, cyber security from our sites that is in terms of software solutions in terms of teaching uh, security awareness to our employees we always have to put a holistic approach and proactively put out solutions to this we should definitely have a incident response team in our organizations if we sometime may become under a data breach we should definitely know why this happened what was the root cause so we could fix it in future let's quickly discuss about supply chain attacks now uh, supply chain attacks are so much prevalent in 2021 and i'm definitely sure that every one of you must have heard about what is a supply chain attack so these are new threats that are coming as challenges to the industry now so what exactly happens what is the principle in supply chain attack so i'll keep it very very short to explain you so what happens in supply chain attacks is the attacker tries to attack the weakest link within the organization's network product software code base so so the attackers or hackers can hit multiple target at once so this basically uh, you can visualize in this manner so there is a organization x which makes a certain product this product is been used by different organizations which includes government entities private entities and other financial organizations now the product which has been developed by the x organization if is vulnerable and the attackers inject their harmful malicious code into the x organization's product or code base of that specific software by identifying a loophole in x infrastructure what they are doing is basically they are attacking all other different organizations who are going to use that specific software of x organization the exactly same thing happened in the solar winds attack a really really very famous attack that occurred and uh, we all know about what was the catastrophic challenges that everyone saw into the cyber security industry due to this so here i have just uh, tried to make down the points so you can understand so there are potentially four points that i want to draw your attention to the first is on your left hand side wherein you can see the attackers injected malicious code 
into the solar winds software into the orion software okay once that was done obviously they identified loopholes into the organization's infrastructure they got the code base and they injected their harmful backdoor into it now solar winds as an organization the software they did not basically do data integrity checks of their software in case any malicious code was implemented into the code base so what they did was they released and deployed this software to their 18000 customers now this is this basically creates a chain hence we call it as supply chain attack now you can just imagine a attacker only had to get access to one organization one organization's infrastructure penetrate it identify a loophole on into uh, that specific organization's software and inject his vulnerable code into it now due to not actively uh, identifying or doing software data integrity checks for that specific uh, code base they, this was again an issue that solar winds did not uh, properly validate the integrity of whatever code base they had and they just released it once it was released there was a software update which all the customers did and now all of them automatically became vulnerable to this attack so you can see on your right hand side uh, right hand side over 425 of the us fortune 500 companies were affected due to this the top 10 us telcos were affected of five breaches of the us military they were also using solar wind software the top 5 us accounting firms pentagon state department national security agency department of justice white house and you can see a sheer breakdown into the stocks of this organization which basically collapsed the identity of this organization now you can just understand that what is the magnitude of this vulnerabilities if they are not identified patched or remediated on a timely manner it would affect a lot of people out there on a very 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 big scale i i also have one more example that i want to share with you guys that is not petia so there was a backdoor which was implemented into an accounting software called as emidoc which was widely used by a lot of ukrainian firms for tax reporting now this backdoor was implemented into this software and now the emi doc the uh, the tax reporting software now was released and supplied to all other organizations and firms they installed it and obviously they now became vulnerable to this because it was an vulnerable code base so there was an in total loss of 10 billion dollars due to notpetya okay the last slide that i want to discuss today is we discussed a lot of things related to um emerging cyber uh, attacks or trends for organizations we also discussed about what are supply chain attacks and how organizations have to keep a good and a accurate security posture toward these types of attack by keeping a holistic approach a proactive approach so that they can be uh, cyber resilient and maybe try to minimize the impact that they may face definitely uh, this talk wouldn't complete without sharing the tips for individuals as well like you and me i can definitely uh, believe that there are a lot of people who also do a lot of mistakes in their day to day life when they are on this digital platforms and they should definitely learn about what is digital hygiene and safety so here there are some points that i want to draw your attention to as an individual you should always keep in mind that you should log in into https websites only now https websites what what does it do uh, what's so magical about it that everyone talks about https websites so it basically creates a secure connection that between a client and a server that is me and my banking website bank.com so if any attacker who is sitting into my infrastructure maybe i'm sitting at a cafe or a cyber cafe 
or uh, maybe at a railway station or airport the third party attacker could not basically snoop in between my communication that i'm doing between me the client and the bank.com so we will over here try to avoid man in the middle attack so always keep in mind that only log in securely on https websites next is check app permissions i cannot stop uh giving a lot importance to this specific point i want to stress stress out a lot of importance to this because i see a lot of people when installing applications into their mobile phone do not give uh importance to the permissions the app is asking for we have identified there were a lot of applications on play store itself that contained malware the malware was injected into a uh, people's phone using these applications for example there was a classic uh, case study that we read in which we saw that there was a calculator app which was onto play store people installed that calculator app and the calculator app said uh, said that in case you need to access uh, or install this application you need you need to give me permission through off camera contacts call logs sms file manager why why would a calculator app would require these certain privileges or permissions on your mobile phone so this is common sense that we need to keep in mind we definitely are in so much hurry to install any such applications that we ourselves give all our permissions out there and then we basically don't think about it but we should always be very very proactive and always think twice whenever definitely you are installing any such applications and giving permissions out there google in this case has identified a lot of applications that were malwareized and have actively been removing from the play store uh, that's a great move that is basically trying to uh, minimize the risk for us and uh, i i also see a lot of people installing applications that are not available on play store from outside Uh, they just go on google and they just say tiktok.apk as tiktok is is banned now in india and i i and i also see that a lot of people also search for modded applications in which uh, the website maybe claims that they are going to give you free followers or maybe you can download anyone's video and stuff like that those applications which are modded modded applications or modified applications does not guarantee or warrant that they have a secure code it could potentially contain the same harmful code or backdoor that we have seen in the case of supply chain attacks so you should always keep in mind that you are not installing any third party applications outside from the trusted source and you are not giving any permissions out there without checking it twice the next point is block ads and use safe browsers like brave you should always try to minimize the impact whenever you are visiting on websites there are a lot of ads which pops up which basically redirects you to multiple websites they redirect you to multiple websites four to five times they are basically trying to earn money through your clicks which is clickbait so you should always see that maybe you can install an ad blocker or use browsers like brave which tries to uh, restrict these uh, ads from tracking your activities as well you must have seen that uh, maybe uh, you search for something let's say dog food on one website and you start seeing dog food everywhere on the internet any website that you go that is basically based on your cookies that have been uh, continuously been tracked so if you want to avoid that definitely you can use ad blockers or browsers like brave the next is uh, share less personal information on social media i see a lot of people posting a lot of information which is personal which is not required to be shared on social media for example i have seen people getting up in the morning putting up a status going to gym at this particular location coming out of the gym going to cafe going to mall going to tuition or going for a guitar class maybe so they continuously keep posting their activities now a attacker can basically study these pattern of activities or maybe create a certain attack vector for you 
remember whenever we we try to share a lot of activities it gives these attackers a uh, more attack surface for us to identify that what are our likes dislikes what are we doing so let's say we i assume shifa shifa really likes to do a lot of stuff that is related to shopping or maybe she is doing uh, a new startup that is related to shopping uh, to sp a specific clothing brand now i start targeting her as an attacker that is sending specific uh, links emails that is being an investor that we want to invest into your startup product stuff or we are this organization will provide you a certification or maybe we want we just want to do a quality check based on that if you verify that quality check we want to give you x amount of money or you can partner up with us in x country will promote your uh, products and stuff so here from here i came to know a lot of information that basically increased a lot of attack surface uh, for any specific user i'm not saying that stop using social media it's a very important tool for for every one of us to connect to individuals and i definitely love the way we can network to our peers and learn so much from social medias but always restrict on sh sharing your personal information i also see a, a lot of posts and people they have shared their credit card saying that today i received my credit card from x bank i'm really very happy it is basically exposing your sensitive information that is your credit card numbers someone in the comment box also said that uh, could you please share how your card looks like from back and the person sh uh, shared that picture as well which also contained a cvv number so you just have to identify that this is something which is personal that should definitely not be put out there on public which could potentially be used in certain manner against you uh the next is beware of personal assistance uh, uh this is again optional if i generally see i, I have uh, read a lot of reports in which i see that using a lot of personal assistants like uh, alexa google home they are continuously listening to our activities when we are uh, we, we have not even activated it Uh, definitely those organizations do this for uh, quality assurance and other purposes through which they want to increase uh, the customer engagement and interaction and they want to learn through it but definitely we do, i do not want someone to snoop in between the personal communication that i'm doing with my family or maybe trying to uh, just discuss about something which i do not want everyone to know so if it's not required definitely you can avoid it avoid using public wifi public wifi are where a very sweet spot for a lot of attackers they are connected to these wifi and they try to snoop in your activities what you are doing or maybe if you are visiting a website that is uh, not running on https maybe they can always also try to capture your uh, data packets and then from there they can also get you use an password which can be later on used for doing an identity theft and the last is stay alert doubt everything at first place this is specifically in context to social engineering and phishing attacks always remember that any time that you get an uh, uh, maybe unwanted call sms email link or anything that you come across you should always do the three a's that we have discussed what is first is analyze second is alert and third one is avoid it okay let uh the government website uh cyber crime department know about this reported as spam phishing so other people uh, do not become a victim for it so with this i would like to end my session uh thank you so much everyone for listening patiently in case you have any questions feel free to ask me thank you so much sir and uh, indeed it was a very amazing session uh specifically talking about the last points where you covered the tips for the digital hygiene and safety i think this is one of the very important uh, uh point to consider and one of the very uh, important aspect to discuss in specifically for the cyber awareness so we are extremely grateful and thankful for uh, for sparing your time with us and then sharing your vast experience on uh, the topics which is very important for even for the people who are not from the cyber background even this informations are very important to them as well um uh, uh, we have dr ranjit sir so can we have a closure remark for sir's uh, presentation yeah thank you so much kritika thank you so much rohit sir uh, indeed it's a very informative 
uh, talk and you have well explained about how the social engineering work how the uh, people should aware about uh, when, uh, because nowadays we are getting a lots of messages every day, big billion sales and other sales and lots of uh, join uh, this WhatsApp group to earn 2000, 3000 per day. So these are the very important tips which you have shared and uh, it's definitely going to be very useful for all the learners and uh, they are going to be a safe surfer, I say, if they, they are going to uh, opt all these cyber hygiene. And uh, as you rightly said that uh, whenever we wake up, we used to start our day with a mobile phone clicks. So I request everyone, you can read, get rid of this virtual drug addiction because I used to name there is a virtual drugs. So it's in, in this virtual era, in this silicon era, we all are addicted with such kind of drugs. Somehow someone, uh, like you said, that uh, they are posting every day, going to gym, to sleeping. So from like B to D, birth to death, we should not update on our social media platform. So with this, thank you so much, sir. It is, uh, I can say it's a really informative session from your side. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Ranjit, sir, uh, for uh, that feedback. I really loved it hearing from you. And uh, I definitely believe that uh, all the participants would now uh, be more cautious uh, while they are doing their activities as Dr. Ranjit sir has al also mentioned that uh, it's a virtual addiction, virtual drug. Uh, it, social media platforms just uh, releases a lot of dopamine in everyone's mind. So it is basically a loop that we get stuck into and we should try to avoid it as much as we can. Once again, thank you so much, sir, uh, for having me and Kritika, thank you so much for uh, the management that you have done. It was great. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, now, uh, uh, sir, with your permission, uh, Dr. Ranjit, sir, with your permission, and of course, Rohit, sir, uh, there is a raised hand from Mohammed Ashraf. So uh, if you want to ask your question, you can unmute and ask your question to sir. Uh, Mohammed Ashraf. I request Ruchika kindly allow uh, allow him to ask their question, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can uh, ask your questions. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sir, let us considering in the chat. Uh, so there is one question in the chat by Dhruv Shyam Wimble. So he said because you already covered it in your last slide as well. If we want to use public Wi-Fi, then what we can do safely and for how long? except for financial transactions. Okay. So first thing is that uh, uh, it, it is totally, uh, I'm not saying that it's totally unsafe to use public Wi-Fi. You can definitely use it for any purposes that you want, but not do financial transactions on it or try to log in on any websites that uh, that that basically are important to you. Okay. Because there, there is a risk of identity theft that can be done over there. So if you're connected on public Wi-Fi, uh, if you want, you can use uh, VPNs, which will basically try to encrypt your connection. So in case anyone is trying to snoop in or maybe doing a man in the middle attack in that case, they cannot get hold of your packets, uh, which are taking away, uh, which are taking your data from client to the server. So that would be helpful in your case. You could also use some proxies in that case. So the attacker is not able to know what is, what is the current website that you are surfing on or whatever data is being uh, transferring from one end to another end. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, okay, so there are certain questions regarding the presentation and the recording and uh, other, uh, other things related to the session. So I would love to uh, inform everyone that our sessions are available on our YouTube channel, Forensic 365. So kindly subscribe our channel and you can watch all the sessions once the recording is uploaded and uh, you can see our session. You can hear the experts anytime when you want to. So um, I think uh, that is the best we can avail from our side. Right, sir? Okay. So uh, now considering, let me just have a last look to the chat so that I, I haven't missed any question. Also... I am still open for five minutes that people can raise your hand, ask their question directly to Rohit, sir, if you want any question. 
So there is one question, Kritika, which is very common. Uh, I used to get from all the participants whenever I used to take session. If someone accidentally open a malicious link and then realize that it is not a genuine, how can we ensure that system is still safe or if the link has done some malicious activity on the system? Sir, try sir. Like for an example, if accidentally I open some link, how being a layman, I should be aware that either it is infected my system or not, or still my system is infected by such malicious link or not. Sure. Uh, so the first thing that we can do if, uh, if I clicked on any such link and then I want to know that, yeah, maybe uh, if there's something that's running in the background. So what you can do is you can identify a uh, simple way would be open your task manager and try to see if any such processes are being running into a computer, which you do not trust. So you're not running any such applications, but there are some processes which has been spawned into your computer. It would be very simple to see that. And if you see any new process that is running, that basically means that uh, there's a, a connection that has been established from your computer to some other computer in that case. Uh, keeping it very simple for everyone uh, to the audience, you can quickly run an uh, antivirus scan onto your computer to see if your computer has been infected or uh, a malware has been downloaded into your computer that could be potentially be removed uh, or maybe put into a quarantine stage so that it does not impact the computer more. There are a lot of activities that can be done from a technical site that is analyzing packets, doing packet inspection and identifying if there is already established session between my computer or the server. And Ranjit sir definitely would be an expert in answering a lot of forensic techniques and tips that one can utilize, but that would be on a, a, a certain level that we need to go. So on, on keeping it very layman, a basic thing would be definitely uh, analyzing uh, your computer by running a quick scan. Uh, Windows Defender, keep it always on. B Windows Defender now has updated signatures that help you. Uh, helps you basically do not install any malware in that case. And if you see uh, that there's any malicious process that has been spawned into your computer, try to see that uh, maybe you can remove that specific uh, software or roll back to the changes uh, that you have done. So this would be some points for anyone who can implement it. Very true, sir. Yeah, um, right. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think this information is very important uh, because yes, uh, Dr. Rajiv sir very rightly said this is one of a very important question even for me because sometime uh, there was a very quick link which called us just get 10% off or something like that. And even I'm that much scared that I even don't open that link and simply delete it because that is what the... Uh, that is what we are scared of now because there are too many cyber threats are there so you we are not aware aware from any of the things so i think that's uh, that is why the campaign is very important because we are every in every cyber campaign we are learning many things by uh, the respected and uh, the, the the expertise in the field of cyber uh, so with this uh, i would like to hand over the session to the one who is actually handling very nicely these uh, Surakshit Bharat campaign, our co-host, uh, Ruchika. Ruchika. Uh, Ruchika, the session is over to you. Kindly hand over the session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Rohit, sir, for uh, such an embracing and thoughtful session. Uh, I really have enjoyed your session really well. And uh, the way you have presented everything was so amazing and easy to understand. And definitely your points will be uh, really helpful for me and our participants as well to prevent ourselves in uh, for future uh, upcoming cyber threats. So thank you so much, sir. With this, uh, with permission of Dr. Ranjit Singh, sir, and uh, SIFS India, I would like to take this opportunity to present this e-certificate of appreciation uh, for delivering an outstanding cyber awareness talk on emerging cyber threats and yep. attacks in 2021. Um, we are grateful for your earnest contribution as a speaker in Surakshit Bharat campaign. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting our re request, for being with us, and for sharing such a wonderful talk. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Ranjit, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful talk. Thank you all the participants for being with us. And uh, soon we are going to announce our next cyber awareness because we are in the conversation. Yes, uh, so... You.
considering all the points uh, we are now come up to the end of the session you can all the participants can download their certificate from the website itself uh, the website is forensicevents.com you can go forward and uh, download your certificate explore on social media tag sifs india of course rohit sir and uh, share your experience uh, for this session so we are extremely thankful to all the participants all around the globe and yes of course indeed doc uh, rohit sir for accepting the invitation and then delivering the session so nicely to all the participants thank you sir once again thank you everyone have a good day bye bye stay thank safe thank you thank you everyone uh, thank you ranjit sir uh, this is really a great initiative that you have done uh, thank you for having me uh, over here thank you sir take care bye bye, bye Thank you, sir. Uh, with permission of uh, Ranjit, sir, I would like to end this session. Bye, everyone.